Oh yeah. set up I'm just setting up the eddy brake on the dyno basically I use it in a manual rpm control mode where uh, I'll use the up and down arrows to change the engine rpm by 500 rpms I start at a thousand rpms I sweep my way all the way up to 4500 setting my uh, VE for each load cell and by then you pretty much have a good shape for the table I run that all the way out to red line and then I'll start doing some wide open pulls this uh, being able to lock in at different RPMs makes the part load tuning very, very, very straightforward. Now I sync the dyno RPM with the engine RPM. Okay. So now, for example, I have the dyno RPM locked at 2000. Just by sweeping my foot on the throttle, I can run up and down the load cells here and tune each one of these in. creates a large vacuum leak. I'm not sure if you can hear that on here. Not a huge fan of it. Uh, we're at 11 pounds now. I'm gonna go two more turns, hopefully end up around 13, and that's where we're gonna call it. We're shooting uh, pretty close to 250 horsepower, 250 foot-pounds torque here. done on the dyno uh i have some weird boost spiking once i turn it up over like 10 you can see the torque really gets crazy here and that's a little worrisome for a little stock motor so i'm gonna stop there but otherwise when the boost is in nice control it does uh put down some pretty good power what are we looking at gate pressure like five to six psi 188 horsepower 184 foot pounds so that's pretty cool uh 196 horsepower 196 foot pounds on 8 psi but when uh 
I run the gate up to like 13 pounds or so. It spikes pretty hard in the center and settles out around 11. Makes 229 horsepower, 250 foot pounds of torque. So that torque will get you. I'm gonna pull it off the dyno now. Take it on a road test, get the uh, acceleration enrichment dialed in. I have better luck doing that by feel uh, in parking lots and stuff, not so much on the dyno. And I want to roll onto the boost in various different conditions and gears on the street and determine if this uh, boost spiking issue is real or uh, was it just something with uh, how I was loading it on the dyno. So. Street test went great. This thing runs very, very nicely. Got the TPS-based acceleration enrichment to where it's nice and easy to drive, very responsive. Super happy with the idle control. You can really beat on it, let it drop to an idle. She catches perfectly, no problem there. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of How to Tune a Turbo Miata. Um, I actually enjoy doing these because I think they're quite a bit easier than the BMWs because usually the setups are pretty similar and Mega Squirt is nice to deal with. I may say that because I'm familiar with it. I know a lot of guys hate on Mega Squirt, but it's really not a bad system for what it is. Uh, it does get the job done and if you configure it well, you can make a really good running car with it. So that's all I got for this one. We'll see you next time.